Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. So, in the last few videos, we have learned about the different transaction codes used in SAP Daily Monitoring. Okay. So, this is nothing but this is the list of all the transactions that we have discussed so far in the last videos, the daily monitoring videos. So, I am going to just go through them again. Okay. So we have started with SM21. So this is the transaction code and that's the corresponding usage. Okay. So SM21, it's used to check the SAP system log overview. It's very important in troubleshooting all the messages, errors or warnings or success, whether it's a success, any changes done, everything is recorded in the system log. So any problem or if you want to check like what has happened in the system yesterday, in the day so the, this list is about daily monitoring still we have other transactions okay which do not come in the daily monitoring list but they are important in maintenance so we'll discuss about them later so this list is the basic checklist for daily monitoring and troubleshooting so sm21 it's the system log now sm51 it's the overview of SAP application server. So in SM51, if you run it, you will see all the list of active application servers in the SAP system. So you can double click and go into each application server, which takes you to this SM50 screen where you can find the list of work process in that application server. Okay, so this is very useful to find out. And from SM51, you can check other things like all the information of the SAP system like the release okay then you can go to all the active users then you can go to this SM50 screenshot okay and you can in SM51 you can check like how many work process are con configured for each application server and what type they are okay all those things then next one is ST22 it shows the ABAP terms that is the runtime errors list Okay, so this is also very important for troubleshooting. You can straightforward run ST22. You can give the filter criteria like user, date, whatever it is, and you can get the list of errors. Okay, so if you double click any dump, you will go into the details where you'll get all the information required for uh, troubleshooting that error. And if you are not able to fix that error, you can also raise a message to SAP online SAP service then the next one is SM13 it, it shows the update overview screen of the SAP system so here also you can filter and depending upon the client user okay so you'll get the list of all the updates like the initial ones okay the v1 process v2 process okay and the error updates so you'll get the entire list of updates the active updates in the SAP system okay and by double clicking each update you can go into the details okay you'll have all the information like which function module that update has failed all such things okay and here in the first screen of the update sm13 you have to check whether the update is active in the sap system or not that is very important okay now sm50 so this gives the entire list of work process in that particular application server okay so from SM51, you can go to SM50 screen by just double clicking on the application server. So here SM50, you can check how many work process are there, how many are, you know, idle now, how many are running, how long it is running. Okay. So say like if some uh, process is running for a long time, you can go to SM50, you can double click it. So there you will have the ABAP program and the SQL if it's, you know, doing some operation on the database okay so all that information you can get from sm50 and if you want to trace anything do any tracing also from sm50 you can start the trace for that process and find out where the problem is okay the next one is sm66 this is the global work process overview so this gives all the active work process in the sap system so it's the global work process overview transaction so here also it shows like these work processes are active Okay, it gives the time since they are active, the user, the program which that work process is running. Okay, then uh, the, the, if it's doing any operation on the da uh, database, then on which table, all this 
information it gives. The next one is ST06, the operating system, monitor overview transaction. So SAP system, SAP software, it runs on a particular host which has some operating system. So even the operating system performance is very crucial for our SAP system performance. So especially the CPU, the memory, okay, then the swap, IO, all these things, all these important parameters of the operating system can be checked here. And here you will find out one more thing which is known as the SAP OS call. Okay, so each SAP system, each host, each host means the physical server of the SAP system has its own SAP OS call which collects all this data, the data from the operating system and it will display it in st 6 transaction code. So the SAP OS call, this particular service process should be running. That is important. If that process is not running, you will not have up-to-date stats of the operating system param uh, parameters in SAP, in st 6 transaction. The next one is st 2 that is the SAP tune summary. This gives all the details about the SAP buffers. Okay, so the SAP memory management. Okay, you will have buffers different types like the table buffer, the program buffer, the factory calendar. Okay, the number range buffer. So many buffers you will have. Apart from this, you will have the SAP role area, the SAP extended memory, and the paging area. Okay, the heap memory. So all that the SAP memory management information is presented in STO2. Next one is STO3N SAP workload monitor. This is an excellent decode for you know finding out the different response times of different transactions or programs or whatever it is. Okay, for each even uh, task type like dialogue, background, RFC calls. So you can differentiate how the response time is distributed in the SAP system. You can find the top programs, okay, uh, utilizing the CPU or the top programs having high response time or having high DB time. So this gives a very good information for collecting statistics weekly or monthly or daily, whatever it is, okay, uh, depending upon the response times, okay. So if you run ST03N, you can select on the left side you will select okay what view you want and what analysis you want to do okay basing on that right side you'll get the information okay so you'll find the the response time the cpu time the db time the roll in roll out time the load time all these things okay so you can analyze it and you can collect statistics from this next one is sto4n the database monitor so we have sto6n that's the operating system monitor you know sto4n is the database monitor so even the performance of database is very crucial sap sap the data is actually stored in the database and sap is processing and presenting it so the performance of database is very very important for the sap systems performance so in sto4n you can check the various important points okay of the database like the buffer qualities the size of the database all these things this transaction gives an overview about all the information related to the performance of the database now next one is al08 this is the system wide users so if you run al08 for every instance you will find the active user list of all the instances so you can see like the total number of users active in the SAP system from this particular transaction. The next one is SMICM. It's the ICM monitored. So initially in SAP architecture video, we have learned that every instance will have its own ICM. Two ICM is used to get the web requests. Okay. So after, uh, you know, from 6.20 version, SAP is designed to get the request from web also, not only from the SAP GUI. So from there, this ICM came into picture. Okay. So every instance will have its own ICM and this SMICM, it shows like whether the ICM is active or not. And 
uh, how many threads like the worker threads the list of worker threads which are configured for that icm so those things you can the connections how many connections it can accept all those things you can see in smicm now the next one is db02 database sites statistics again this transaction gives information about the size of the database okay here we have learned about various terms related to database like the table space okay so please go through the database relevant information documents also okay and sap administrator should have a sound knowledge about the underlying database as well as operating system so in this training we are le learning about sap only okay to better understand the sap system please also go through a database and operating system information also so here we have learned about the table space size then tables indexes like what are the sizes of them what is the free space okay then we have learned some terms like extends so all the information related to database and the objects in the database the sizes about them then db12 this gives information about the database backups okay in especially in production systems backups run daily because it's very important if we have any failure at any point in time then we have to restore it so we restore from the backup just to make that we don't have any loss of data so that's why backups should be there and db12 is used to monitor the backups okay so we will find out like uh, you know if the database backup has failed then if it's running good then it's fine if it's failed or something then we have to find out like where the problem is then we have to report it to the backup team and here we have come across redo log backups also if the archive logs so sap has uh, the oracle or you know whatever database it is it has the redo logs those are copied into a different location as the archive log in the archive log directory the archive logs are there so even these archive logs also have to be backed up frequently we have learned that if that archive log is full then it will the database will come to halt because the redo generated will not be able to create an archive log if the archive log destination is full so never ever the archive log should be 100 percent so the backups should run and once say like two copies of backup are taken the logs will be deleted because for a restoration along with the database backup even the archive logs should be applied what is written in the archive logs all the changes made to the database are written there okay so that's why here also you need to have some knowledge about database okay so db12 is about database and archive log backups next one is sm58 the trfc monitored the trfcs and qrfcs are nothing but this is how the communication is done in between sap systems okay so sm58 shows the list of trfc money uh, the trfcs which are running so here you find the active ones and the failed ones okay so if you find any failed ones during the daily monitoring you have to analyze it fix it if not report it to the respective team then coming to the qrfc monitoring we have seen four transactions smq1 smq2 smqr and smqs so the q1 is smq1 is the qrfc monitor for outbound queue smq2 is the qrfc monitor for inbound queue smqr is the administrating the queue in inbound scheduler and smqs is the administration for outbound queue out scheduler okay so a qrfc is nothing but a trfc so QRFC has exactly the data is transferred exactly once and in order also. Order is also taken care in QRFCs. Okay. So Q1 you will find the outbound. Outbound means the data going out from the SAP system. Q2 is inbound. The data coming into the SAP system. Okay. And QR, SMQR and SMQS are the respective inbound and outbound onboard schedulers. So there you can activate scheduler. You can activate deactivate the queues which are configured there okay register them unregister them all these things you can check related to the qrfcs 
The next part we have discussed about is SAP printing where we have seen these two transactions SP01 and SP80. SP01, so we have to check, you know, the spools uh, using SP01, you will check like what are, what are the spools which are processed. So here also you can filter them depending upon the period, the time period or user or whatever it is, the output device. Okay. So this gives the list of all the spools which are processed. Here we, if we have seen two types of requests, the spool request and output request. Initially spool request is created and output request is the customized request for a particular output device. The spool request is again formatted which is ready for the device. That is the output request. So one spool request can have many output requests. So all the, that overview we will see in SP01. Okay. And SPAD. SPAD is the spool administration transaction. Even though this transaction is not in daily monitoring, you don't report anything from SPAD. But just, you know, if you find any errors related to the printer configuration or something in SP01, then you have to go to SPAD and check. Okay. Like how the printer, that output device is, you know, defined. So here we have seen the different uh, specifications for the output device like uh, what access method it is using okay local remote front end okay then how to define that output device we have a short name all these things okay so each output device in sap is mapped to an output device in the operating system also okay that is done in the os level it's maintained in the file now the next one we have seen is COT and SOST. So this COT transaction is used for SAP Connect administration. Okay, so SAP Connect is the interface which communicates with the SAP Connect exchange server. And in COT transaction, we'll see like what are the different nodes which are configured for different types of communication, fax, internet, etc. And we'll see how many requests were processed successfully how many have failed how many are in waiting transit etc okay and we'll see like how the nodes are configured we'll get all the information regarding the uh, configuration of the node the next one is sost so you'll monitor in daily monitoring you'll run sost if you find any errors or something you'll go and check in scott and scott also gives an immediate screenshot like how many are processed how many are completed how many are successful how many are in process how many are in waiting that information immediate information also you'll get from scott and from sost also sost by different filters like depending upon the user or that's the sender or depending upon whether it's a what type of communication method fax or internet or whatever it is okay in the period and the status of the request also you can filter them and it's very good to you know monitor and analyze the errors for the send requests from SAP. You'll have various options like you can enable tracing, you can view the log, all these things. Okay, so these are the list of transactions used in daily monitoring. So this list, you know, it's very useful. It comes as a handy for you. Okay. So in the next video, we'll learn about the other maintenance transactions in SAP. Okay. Thank you. Bye.